Hi, my name is Johnny McLean. I'm an associate professor of geology at Southern Utah University, and I want to show you one of my favorite outcrops in the world. We're in Salt Creek Canyon, and we affectionately call it in the geology program at Southern Utah University, uh, Two Mile Canyon, because it's only about two miles away from campus. We can bring students here really easily, and it's just a wonderful place to see an interconnected relationships of uh, ge geologic structures. So what we're looking at here are some basically horizontal beds of the Carmel Formation. But up above my head, the bedding planes take a steep dive and you can see that the beds are folded. This is a really fundamental part of structural geology, the deformation of sedimentary units. And what I love about this place is we, we can see so many interconnected um, concepts in geology all right in one place. So if you follow these these basically horizontal beds and they dip down above my head in a big fold and then they're cross cut by a thrust fault and the, this thrust fault you can see coming up um, again above my head it splays in a couple places right here but this is a, a fantastic place to introduce students to some some basic concepts in structural geology um, we can also not only observe these structures but we can uh, do some measurements um, and we can do some structural analyses. We can even broaden our uh, perspective and tie these outcrop scale structures to uh, more mountain scale structures. Um, there's a principle in geology called Pompelli's Rule that states that small scale structures can mimic large scale structures. And these small scale structures, these folds and thrust faults, mimic larger mountain scale structures caused by the severe orogeny, one of the main mountain building events in Western North America. Hi, I'm Jason Kaiser and I'm a geology professor at Southern Utah University. I teach classes that focus on geochemistry and igneous petrology. And today I'm here at Three Peaks Recreation Area. This is an area just west of Cedar City, Utah, that is famous for these granitic rocks that you see right behind me. These rocks represent a fossilized, solidified magma chamber that was active about 20 to 21 million years ago. Now, at that time, this area would have looked entirely different than it does today. It would have been something similar to uh, the Cascade Range or the Andes in South America today. And uh, what we're seeing here are the remnants of this plumbing system that would have potentially fed very large volcanoes with huge explosive eruptions, very similar to what we see in the Andes and Cascades today. And so the proximity of these great rocks to Cedar City makes this a great place to teach and study geology, specifically geochemistry and igneous petrology and volcanology like I do. Hi, I'm Casey Webb. I'm a lecturer of geology at Southern Utah University. And we are here at the beautiful Cedar Breaks National Monument, uh, which is located just in our backyard about 20 miles from campus. This colorful formation that you see behind me is called the Claron Formation, and it was deposited in a shallow lake setting about 50 million years ago. The water levels in this lake would fluctuate and go up and down, which is why we see such an interbedded uh, nature throughout this formation. It has sandstone, limestone, and mudstone. Well, we see a combination of interbedded lithology with some, some of the layers being weaker than others. And this whole area has also been uplifted due to faulting from basin and range extension, which has created these prominent vertical fractures or lines throughout the formation. The combination of these two things has resulted in the formation of rock spires or hoodoos that are located throughout Cedar Breaks National Monument. We see the same formation and same features in other locations such as Bryce Canyon National Park, which is also in SUU's backyard located about an hour and a half from campus. Hello, my name is Grant Scheimer. I'm an assistant professor of geology at Southern Utah University. And we're out here at a site called Parowan Gap in southwestern Utah. And we're at this site because we can see clear exposures of two major units that illustrate severe foreland basin deposition and subsequent deformation. The lowermost unit is the Iron Springs Formation. It's a late Cretaceous formation deposited 
Just to the west of here, it is intensely deformed in an overturned fold and thrust fault structure, and then capped by an angular unconformity and the overlying reddish-colored Grand Castle Formation. So the neat thing about western Utah is that we're sort of at the proximal portion of deposition in the western interior seaway, and we can see deformational structures very clearly as compression continued, uh, including the very distinct angular unconformity and then thick deposition of localized conglomerates. So it's a very valuable place to study the evolution of Western North America and the distribution of potential reservoir units um, in the state. Taking a closer look at the Iron Springs Formation, there are many pr features that we can examine to interpret the paleo environments of late Cretaceous Utah. The most striking examples at Parowan Gap are well-preserved dinosaur footprints as natural casts in the base of sandstones. An example is right here in front of us where you can see several toes of a footprint superimposed on a previous footstep created by that dinosaur. And there are also additional footprints preserved as casts there. This rock also shows, uh, if you look closely, uh, impressions of plant fossils which are quite abundant in the formation. And in the mudstone components of the formation you can find fragments of turtle and mammal bones, uh, which means there's a lot of potential for paleontological research here at this site. Hi, my name's Royce Nelson. I'm a geophysicist. Um, I've been a member of the AAPG for decades. I uh, was involved in founding Landmark Graphics, which had a big impact on, on the things the AAPG does. I live in Cedar City, Utah now, and do some work with uh, Southern Utah University. Southern Utah University is located at the center of the best seismic scale outcrop geology on planet Earth. I've traveled all over the world and I know that. You can look at the mountains and see everything from structure to stratigraphy and then you can go right up and look at it in detail. Because geology is fractal, it gives you a chance to, to see that. This particular outcrop that I've chosen to talk about is related to mountain building. This is Spring Creek, just outside of Canaraville, Utah, which is about 12 miles from SUU. And we have here uh, some compression re that resulted when the Pacific Plate came in and hit the, the North American Plate. You can see the folding, which is a direct result of compression, and you can actually see where the beginnings of overthrust are occurring. You see this same kind of thing about seven miles to the south of here, up Taylor Creek Canyon. And then, of course, in Cedar Canyon, you see the same thing. But the compression, when it happens, it squeezes the rocks together and you get this kind of folding. And you also get something called a back thrust. A back thrust is where two layers of rock come apart and it breaks and comes on top of itself. And we have a beautiful example of a back thrust over at Cedar Canyon. It's just one of many examples of the kind of geology that are available within uh, a half an hour drive from Southern Utah University. My name is Mark Svoboda. I'm a geologist and a graduate from Southern Utah State College, now Southern Utah University. Graduated in 1980. And uh, I wanted to tell you about my favorite outcrop in Southern Utah. We're here at the Quail Creek State Park, which is located between St. George, Utah and Zion National Park. And this is the Virgin Anacline. Uh, you can see the lake behind me here fills in the erosional axis of the anacline. You can see the west dip of the anticline to the left here and the east dip to the right. The rocks here are Middle Triassic Moenkopi formation and they kind of core the anticline here. This anticline is significant also in that it was mapped many years ago uh, and became the first oil field in the state of Utah in 1907. This is a picture of the rig some of the tents, and it, this picture was taken about two or three miles down to the south here. But it's kind of a combination of a surface geologic mapping as well as a successful oil field. This field produced oil from the upper Pennsylvanian limestone. Julie and I look forward to advancing the geosciences building on the campus of Southern Utah University in Cedar City, Utah, and being involved in the development of the geologic program there. This is my favorite outcrop, the Virgin Anacline in Washington County, Utah. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>